teacher. Hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on the production possibility curve. In your last lesson, you learned the definition of resources and the difference between the concepts of scarcity and shortage. In today's lesson, we will discuss the production possibility curve or in short, the PPC. PPC is a curve that shows different combinations of goods and services that a society can produce given certain assumptions. Students, we have to make four assumptions to draw PPC. The assumptions are the economy produces two products or a group of two products. The economy produces efficiently. The level of technology is fixed. The quantity and quality of resources or factors of production is fixed. To help you understand the PPC, let me briefly explain the assumptions. Let's start with the assumption of two products. An economy produces many types of goods and services. However, to make the analysis simple, we assume that the economy produces only two goods such as F and tractors or two groups of goods such as food and machinery. Now, let me explain the assumption of efficiency given our two goods. In simple terms, efficiency implies absence of wastage or idleness of resources and available technology. However, it can also be defined more technically. Let's see this definition. When an economy produces efficiently, it is not possible to increase the quantity of one of the two goods without reducing the quantity of the other. For example, it is not possible to reduce the amount of machinery without reducing the amount of food. With regard to the assumption of the PPC about the level of technology, it is assumed that there is no technological progress or technological deterioration. Finally, let me explain the assumption of fixed resources. In our model, the assumption of fixed resources implies that the quantity and quality of factors of production such as labour, land, capital and entrepreneurial ability does not change. Students, I hope you are now clear with the meanings of the assumptions. Later on we will relax the assumptions of fixed technology and fixed resources and see their effect on the PPC. Now let's see the following production possibility schedule for a hypothetical economy. Based on the schedule, we will draw the PPC. The schedule shows that the economy produces death and tractors. Production possibilities A, B, C, D and E show the possible combinations of death and tractors that the economy can produce given the four assumptions of our model. For example, at point A, no tractors will be produced as all resources and technology is allocated to produce a maximum of 4,800 tonnes of death. Contrary to that, at point E, no death will be produced as all resources and technologies are allocated to the production 
of a maximum of 200 tractors. Points B, C and D represent production possibilities that consist of both F and tractors. Students, now let's draw a PPC for the production possibility schedule you just saw. As you can see in this animation of the PPC, points on the PPC such as B, C and D are attainable and efficient. They indicate full utilization of resources. Points outside the PPC such as points G are unattainable given the resources and level of technology. Points within the curve such as F are attainable but are inefficient. Students, now I want you to answer the following question individually in two minutes. The question is, why are the points on the PPC efficient? I hope you have answered the question. Now, let me give you the answer by referring to point B and C in the previous example. In this example, point B denotes a production possibility of 4,000 tons of DEF and 50 tractors. If society wants to increase the quantity of tractors from 50 to 100, the quantity of DEF must decrease from 4,000 to 3,000 tonnes. Conversely, if society wants to increase the quantity of DEF from 3,000 to 4,000 tonnes, the quantity of tractors must decrease from 100 to 50. That is why points on the PPC such as points B and point C are efficient. Students, to make clear the concept of efficiency, let me ask you another question. This time, discuss it with the student sitting next to you in two minutes. The question is, why is point F inefficient?
students, did you discuss the question and find the answer? Let's see why point F is inefficient. Point F is inefficient because A. It is possible to move from point F to point B where the quantity of F increases from 1,600 tonnes to 4,000 tonnes while the quantity of tractors remains the same, that is, it stands at 50. Or B. It is possible to move from point F to point D where the quantity of tractors increases from 50 to 150 while the quantity of F remains the same at 1,600. Or C. It is also possible to move from point F to point C where the quantity of tractors increases from 50 to 100 and at the same time the quantity of F increases from 1,600 to 3,000 tonnes. Students, what will happen if resources and technology change? When the quantity and quality of resources increases and technology progresses, the production possibilities of the economy expand. As a result, the production possibilities curve shifts outward to the right. Combinations of F and tractors that were previously unattainable now become attainable. That is, the economy can produce more than 200 tractors and more than 4,800 tonnes of F simultaneously. This phenomenon is known as economic growth. The PPC and its shape can be used to explain the concept of opportunity cost. Before we explain opportunity cost, I want you to do this. Draw a PPC based on the following schedule for two products, namely milk and computers. Put computers on the horizontal axis. I hope you have constructed the PPC 
based on the hypothetical schedule. Let's see if your answers are correct in the construction of PPC. Milk being on the vertical axis and computers on the horizontal axis, all you have to do is mark the y-intercept or point A and the x-intercept which is point F. Then plot the production possibilities denoted by points B, point C, point D and point E respectively. If you join the points, you get the PPC. Now let's use the PPC we have just constructed to explain the concept of opportunity cost. But what does opportunity cost mean? The opportunity cost of producing a commodity is the amount of other commodities that must be foregone in order to produce the first. Students, have you observed that the PPC we have constructed for milk and computers is a downward sloping curve? That shape implies that when we produce more computers, the amount of milk produced is decreased. I also hope you have noted the following. With the production of 10 more computers, the amount of milk given up for every additional unit of computers increases. At point B, the opportunity cost is 5 litres of milk. At point C, the opportunity cost is 10 litres of milk. At point D, the opportunity cost is 20. At point E and F, it is 25 and 40 litres of milk, respectively. I hope you have observed that the opportunity cost of producing more and more computers increases. That is why the PPC becomes concave to the origin. With this, we come to the end of the lesson. But before we wind up today's lesson, let me remind you of the main points that we discussed in this program. We discussed that the PPC is a model that shows the production possibilities of an economy given the assumptions of two products, efficiency, fixed resources and fixed technology. We also learnt that points on the PPC are efficient while points inside the PPC are not. However, points outside the PPC are unattainable until the quantity and quality of resources increases and the level of technology improves. Finally, the concave downward sloping shape of the PPC reflects the increasing opportunity cost of producing more of one of the products. In our next lesson, we will discuss the flows of income and expenditure. Until then, it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.